Okay, in this video, I'm going to compare this uh, Ignis table tabletop uh, lockout manual crank uh, spring driven machine compared to um, maybe three of the Stringway uh, models that I currently carry. Um, the most popular is the ML100, uh, the newest one is the MS140L, and I can't get it on camera, but uh, this is the MS200. And you know, obviously, it, it doesn't have the table. It's the same table as on the ML100. Uh, I just can't get it in the camera. Uh, in, in. Uh, so uh, it's the, the MS200. And it's going to make a simple comparison between these machines. Now, for this comparison, I'm going to group pretty much all, all these three Stringway models into one category and just call it a Stringway machine. Um, I, I guess the, the most popular model is the ML100, so I will be focusing mostly on the ML100. And this particular model from Ignis, of course, yeah, there's many different types of uh, Ignis uh, uh, manual crank tabletop models out there. And not just Ignis, but many other makers as well. So we're just going to call this just a tabletop manual crank uh, lockout machine versus a stringway machine or the ML100 and um, if, if you've seen other videos that I've made or just in pretty much what people have been writing about uh, on, on the internet it, it's I'm not going to go into the really in depth but basically Ignis is you know low quality low cost and stringway is a high quality high co high cost uh, there's no secret about that if you just look at the prices and you're going to notice that this is much cheaper Ignis is much cheaper Stringway is much more expensive and the reason for that or one of the reasons is that the quality in Ignis is just much lower lower quality lower materials uh, lower level craftsmanship and most often than not uh, just a lower quality design where Stringway is just higher quality higher craftsmanship uh, better design, well thought out design, the pieces work better and it's just a better made machine and it's better designed for stringing and just just go on the internet look at um, what people write about both types of uh, companies and the products they put out and you're pretty much going to see the same thing uh, so I'm not going to go into that but just a little bit about design uh, Anybody that's ever used a lockout machine knows that the constant tension pull is very difficult, if not impossible, to do. You typically have to tension the string three times or crank very, very slow to get the relatively the similar results as on a constant tension pull drop weight or maybe very expensive electronic machine. Um, so if you want to like really do a good stringing job it it actually takes a lot more time on a lockout machine simply because you have to pull the string three times um, and you have to crank it very very slow whereas with a drop weight machine or even string weights uh, the, the spring driven machines are all constant tension pull you just pull it once and it constantly pulls and takes up the slack for you so as far as the tensioning mechanism, yeah, it's uh, the Ignis is is a little bit more more complex. There's more parts in the moving in the tension system, more likely to break. I've sold this model before, and it has broken a lot more than the tension heads on the Stringway machines. Uh, and this goes for the ML100, the MS200, MS140. The, it's a much simpler design, less likely to break, more reliable, better constant tension pull. And you look at the clamping system. Uh, this Ignis uh, a swivel clamp, a double action clamp. It's got a lot more moving parts, a lot more springs, uh, nuts and bolts that need uh, adjusting. And not only for Ignis, but just about any other maker out there, their, their clamping systems are usually, it's a double action where you have to latch the base and then clamp the string. So it does require a lot more, uh, well, a little bit more work, but more importantly, the clamps tend to uh, need more adjusting on a more regular basis. 
so it, it is a lot more a lot more time to use overall whereas stringway uh, they used to have clamp a clamp similar to this a double action but they got rid of that because again the design is just more moving parts more things to go wrong this is the single action uh, clamping system the t92 much more simple there really is no no screws or bolts or springs to adjust it's a very simple mechanism very less likely to break in fact it the only way it'll break is if you drop it or if you hit it really hard with something and just destroy it otherwise just regular normal use I've never seen it break it's much more reliable and in many ways it's faster to use you just move the clamp clamp the string you don't have to worry about locking the base it automatically locks when you clamp the string so again this is a better clamping system the racket supports for this Ignis and most other manufacturers out there the typical six point mounting system if you've asked anybody that strung a racket on a machine like this they will always tell you that it's it's common knowledge that the racket will change shape during stringing which means there is a lot more stress on the racket compared to the direct supports on the string way where the racket will literally not change shape at all because it, the direct supports will prevent the racket from warping during the stringing process so definitely the, the racket supports on the string way are much better for your racket less likely to break a racket as a opposed to these uh, six point clamping system that Ignis and most other manufacturers make. Um, both have uh, table locks. So in the design is different. This Ignis uses a disc braking system where the stringway uses um, like a pin, a pin system where, where there, there's holes underneath the table where a pin will, will slide up into it and stop it. So, in that regards, yeah, the Ignis, you can adjust it a little bit more than on the stringway. The stringway, I think it has 12 points where it can stop, where the Ignis, uh, 360 degrees on a, on a disc braking system, it pretty much, you can uh, stop it anywhere you want. So that, that possibly is one advantage this system has over the stringway. However, this uh, this braking system I think is more likely to break over time it's a little bit more complex a little bit more moving parts the string gripper on this Ignis the linear ball bearing string gripper again I've sold many of these and many different Ignis products and this does it can break uh, the ball bearings can come out the if it's not calibrated properly, uh, the string isn't gripped properly, or the string can be uh, uh, sometimes damaged. But most importantly, it can it can break. I've I've had this break before. Whereas the stringway string gripper is the same for pretty much all the stringway machines. It's a much simpler one, less moving parts, less likely to break. So. Just everything, the clamps, the string gripper, the racket su supports, um, the tension mechanism is obviously better on the stringway than on the Ignis. But of course, you know, you pay more for the stringway. So all of that information is out there on the internet. You can look it up for any, any bulletin board uh, system out there and you can read more, more into it um, on your own time. But what I want to do in this video is show you one other thing and if you look at the sheer size of these two machines this Enes tabletop manual crank system is just so much bigger and so much heavier than this ML100 and of course if you compare it to the MS140 uh, MS140 is, is a much lighter smaller machine I mean it's designed for to be tra to travel with so it's not really a fair comparison but this ML100 is designed to sit on your desk just like this machine this Ignis machine but if you just look at the footprint and the size 
and, and put, put it in perspective, this Ignis machine is about 24 kilograms. Well, this Stringling machine is about 17. So, so you're, you're talking at least 7 kilograms difference between these two. And if you just look at the footprint that the Ignis machine takes up compared to the string weight, and you definitely need more space for for this this lockout machine compared to the string machine, uh, the string way. So you definitely need a bigger table. And the, the most important that I think, besides the weight and the size of these two machines, is look at the height, the height of the table where the racket is. So when you mount the racket, it's gonna be sitting over here. And compared to over here, and if you look at that, just the height distance is just massive, massive. Now, this table that the machines are sitting on is just your average table uh, that you find, you know, just about anywhere. It's a standard. It's about, from the floor up to the top, the tabletop, it's about 69 centimeters, 70 centimeters. And that's pretty much the average size of most tables, at least in Japan. I'm pretty sure in the United States, it should be very similar. And to put it in perspective, I am five feet, nine inches tall, or about 173 centimeters. And when I use the Ignis, or when I use this, uh, this Ignis machine, I found that for my height, the table is just too high. Now, if you see, I'm, I'm standing here, I have to really lift my hands up to really get to the plane where the racket's going to be sitting. And this is where your hands are most of the time. And for me, it's just too high. So, I would say that if you have an average table of a height of 70 centimeters, 69 centimeters, if you're taller than 6 feet, then maybe this is okay. But if you're less than six feet, especially if you're shorter than me, if you're less than five feet nine, then this is too high. So you have to make sure that you have a low table. A low table or maybe a, a small stool or something to stand on to make yourself taller. This machine right now, to a certain extent, you can adjust the height of this table. But you can only make it taller than what it is now. This is the lowest it will, it will be. You cannot make it any lower than this, other than to lower the table. So, if you're planning on using this on a regular size table, you better be tall. If you're not tall, this is not a practical machine to use. Whereas with this stringway, the table is a lot lower. So on an, a regular size table, it's okay. And to be honest, even for my height, I often find that the height of this table is a little bit low for me. So it's quite often I will put books underneath the feet of the machine just to raise it up and, and just raise it up a few inches to my liking. Uh, but you can do that. It's easier, at least you can raise it up. You can raise the height of this whereas with this you can't lower it on this table you need a new table um, you can make it taller if you're seven feet then that could be an option but you got to be really really tall to want this any higher than it is now so that's really something to consider so in that regards um, for, for this machine to be practical for most people, you, you must be really tall or you must have really low tables. And so really think about that before you buy it. And that's pretty much one of the biggest points I like to make in this video. Another point I would like to make is obviously in the sheer size of this. Again, you need a big table and... The string way is a little bit smaller, so you can get away with a smaller table. Now, many people like myself, 
the reason why you buy a machine like this is because you can put on a table and use it and when you're done you maybe put it to the side put it on a shelf or something and and use your table for something else um, very rarely at least in my my case um, do I have a table that that is able to accommodate a stringing machine and nothing else it's it's usually you know when you string you take it out you put it on the table you use it when you're done you put it away and just the sheer size of this is not practical not to mention the weight I mean trying picking this up is very heavy you got to be really careful and pretty strong and for the string weight it's a little bit lighter and the thing you can do with the string weight is that it's relatively easy to take it apart for easy storage easy movement for instance the table is only one screw you just unscrew one screw and the table comes out and you know the tension bar and the, the, the weight comes out really quickly whereas with the Ignis the table is attached by four screws that need to be unscrewed and there's two screws underneath for the disc braking system that need to be um, that need to be turned as well so that's a minimum of six screws that you need to unscrew to get the table off and Well, I guess I could show you here with the string So that's how you take the table off. It's just one screw. You unscrew one screw. And to take the tension rod out, it's really simple. You just That's pretty much all you need to do to take, a, to take apart the machine in its main parts. And for easy storage, easy moving. You know, this base is really light. It's really easy to move. I can pick it up with one hand, no problem. Whereas with this Ignis one, and this, this lockout machine, you have to unscrew these four screws and when you take these screws off, you got to really be sure that the table is doesn't fall off. Uh, it's unlike it's a different system compared to the string way, where it just sits on just just one pillar or one post where you just pull it off. Whereas this, you take off the screws, and then all of a sudden nothing is holding the table down. So you have to be really careful when you take the screws off not to drop the table. And that that is something to think about. It is a little tricky. And when you get these screws off. Here we can look at the the braking system here. Here we go. This is a good. Uh, maybe you can see in this video. It's got this disc brake here, and if you if you look here, there's this these two big long screws that are attached to the table. So you have to unscrew these screws as well to get the table off. And. I, I suppose when you take the table off, it's probably better to unscrew these screws first, these two screws, which is a little tricky. And, and then you take these four screws off to get the table off. So it is a lot more work, uh, a, a, a lot more to think about if you are thinking about taking the machine apart and putting it together every time you use the machine. Whereas if you just saw the video how simple this was able to do 
for, for easy storage, easy movement. So, so pretty much that is the point that I wanted to make in this video. I mean, it's, it's common knowledge that, you know, Stringway is a better design, higher price, better quality, better stringing job. I mean, everybody's writing that. Uh, I mean, you can't compare it. They're two, in two totally different price categories. And that's okay. You know, if you want a cheap machine and you're willing to accept that, then you should. It, it's, it's up to you. And it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to make sure that you can use the machine. And if you're short, you have a high table, you have no place to put the machine when you're done. You have to leave it on the table. You have to think about all of this before you pick the right machine. Uh, so again, even if if this Ignis is cheaper, if it's too high for you, if it's too heavy for you, if it's too big for you, if you don't have the right table for it, then it's you can't use it. So just think about that when you do your shopping for a stringing machine. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write in the comments and maybe we can have a discussion about this. Uh, thank you very much.